Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP-1. My Romulus project aiming to bring first crew to Mars is in full swing. As you could see in the previous video, Romulus Mars crewed vehicle is almost finished. Right now you witness the launch of new fuel tanks that hold liquid hydrogen for trans-Martian injection. Their launch vehicle is Naga Heavy, capable of getting 500 tons to LEO or about 150 tons to 8000 km circular orbit. During launch, one of the 8G3 engines on the upper stage failed, but there was still enough thrust to continue the mission. I was a bit late on the burn to match the velocities, so I've overshot by almost 10 km. Fortunately, it was more of an inconvenience than a problem. I've sent the refueling tag to bring the tank to the MCV. Control authority was quite poor, so maneuvering this assembly wasn't the easiest task, and it took quite a while to perform proper docking, but eventually it went perfectly fine. The second tank was launched in exactly the same manner, including failing age 3 But this time rendezvous went better and docking was finished quickly. Step of the mission was some more EVA to remove redundant RCS ports. It will help both in game performance and in RCS fuel efficiency. Engineer has detached ports from the tanks and put them on the tag so they can be gotten rid of later. Halfway through the work, astronaut gets back to the capsule to replenish nitrogen used by jetpack, and the tug reorients to another docking port. Some more ports are being removed, and we can call EVA successful. Final technical launch brings resupply module to top up arrows in 50 NTO for RCS and supplies for the crew. It also carried the communication antenna as I've realized Romulus has only short range comms. Rendezvous and docking were nominal. So 
supplies were transferred and the antenna was attached to the MCV. Finally, it's time for historic launch of the crew that will go to Mars. Major Rocket leaves the crew capsule and sets it on the proper course to intercept the interplanetary vessel. After several hours, the trip ended with picturesque docking. Last point on the checklist before departing is to remove all the unnecessary modules, starting with a refueling pack. Then, capsule with construction team and a resupply probe. After several months in orbit, crew comes back home safely. With Romulus MCV all done and dusted for and crew getting accustomed to the habitat, formal launches needs to be done prior departure. First of them is the resupply depot that will be launched straight to Mars, where it will air break to orbit. AG3 engine makes all the work to propel the depot to proper trajectory. Next launch profile is quite similar, but this time the payload is a tank of hydrologs that will be used to refuel Martian lander before its landing on Mars, Deimos and Phobos. And speaking about the lander, here it is. This Starship-like creation uses procedural wings to perform controlled aerobraking in Martian atmosphere, before using its five RL-10 engines to propulsively land. Last but not least is the launch of a small mobile habitat that will host crew on Martian surface. It features a small ISRU unit that will allow to create some radiation shielding for crew comfort. You can also see a huge heat shield that will allow for direct descent of the rover straight from interplanetary trajectory.
all of the preparations are completed. Supporting hardware is already on its way to Mars, so Romulus MCV is undergoing final inspection before igniting its Nerva XA Prime nuclear engines for transmersion injection burn. Accelerating by 3144 meters per second takes exactly 46 minutes and 4 seconds. Right before reaching proper trajectory, a pair of exhausted drop tanks is being jettisoned. Soon after the main burn, engines light up once again for small correction of 150 meters per second. And first Mars crewed vessel is on its way to its destination. Almost six months later, rover approaches Red Planet. It aligns itself its shield first and begins deceleration. big surface area it breaks quite quickly and at about 11 km altitude it deploys its parachutes. After full inflation of parachutes heat shield with cruise module separates. Parachutes are not enough for soft landing so a second before touchdown retro rockets fire and careful remaining velocity. Then solar panels extend, and ISRU unit starts to process Martian soil into radiation shielding and craft switches to standby mode until crew lands. Now, resupply module enters Mars SOI. It performs small correction to reach perfect altitude to be able to air break to orbit. Next step after deceleration is to raise perapsis to get to stable orbit. Lander arrives next. It uses propulsive capture, as air braking from interplanetary velocities would be too spicy for the tanks to withstand. Again, after getting to elliptical orbit, Parapsis is raised to 500 km, as that would be the orbit of the MCV. As you might or might not notice, all of the crafts aim for the orbital plane of Phobos, that will make visiting moons easier. It also applies to the refueling depot you see right now. Romulus Mars crewed vehicle has joined the party. Of course, it also uses its engine for orbit insertion. First, it enters highly elliptical orbit so it can cheaply match orbital plane with the rest of the crafts. Then, the second braking burn puts it in nice, tight 500 by 500 km parking orbit.
when it's done, all the vessels begin to rendezvous. First is the refueling depot. Now, the resupply module. And finally, the lander. And this is how the whole assembly has made its journey to low Martian orbit. The design process was quite challenging and the mission took a lot of time to be brought to current state, but I am so close to put the first astronauts on the surface of other planets. Crew is already running tons of science and three of them are preparing to descend to this alien world. But it will be covered in next episode. Thank you everyone for watching, please press like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and see you again in my next video.